forever. Good afternoon, I'm Latrice Clay. And I'm Bishop, uh, excuse me, Deacon Barnabas White. And again, <laughs> sisters and brothers of Christ, uh, we want to welcome you to the VBS Gospel Network with the Agape Christian Center and Bishop Lawrence Bond. The Agape Christian Center is located at 1823 East Broadway in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. Zip code 72301. Our phone number to contact us is 901-270-1727 or by email at bishoplvon at yahoo.com, or you can like us on Facebook at Agape WM. That's some good information, Patrice. And before we bring the bishop on, we would like to thank all our faithful viewers and listeners for viewing our broadcast. Now, at this time, we hope that you will call a friend, tell a family member, even tell a stranger, just knock on a neighbor's next door next door, and tell them to tune in to bbsgospel.net. Right now, you still have time. Now, the next voice you will hear will be none other than our bishop, Lawrence Fun. Amen. 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 God bless you so much tonight. Amen. I'm Bishop Lawrence Vaughn, senior pastor of the Agape Christian Center Church in West Memphis, Arkansas. We're located at 1823 East Broadway in the city of West Memphis. Our zip code is 72301. Um, we are so grateful tonight that you have tuned into this broadcast. We thank God so much for the privilege and pleasure of being able to share a word with you for a right now situation. I pray that amen on this Memorial Day uh, as we uh, celebrate and memorize those individuals that have died uh, for ser several causes, amen, for um, the American people, for, you know, those loved ones that we've lost, amen, that have uh, given their lives, amen, to sacrifice for this amen. country. Amen. We want to uh, remember them in amen. saying we thank God for you being a part of such an individual amen. that would sacrifice their life for the sake of the rest of us. We are grateful to the Lord so much from whom all the blessings flow. I want to tonight give a special recognition uh, to the staff of the Spirit of Barnabas magazine, uh, God has blessed us to be a writer for the magazine, and we want to uh, put emphasis on the Spirit of Barnabas magazine tonight because it is a magazine that is about spreading the good news, amen. So we're grateful to the Lord so much from whom all the blessings flow. At the end of the broadcast, we're going to come back and we're going to share with you some ideals in which you can obtain a copy of this message, and I really want you to... Uh, pay very close attention on how to get a copy of this message. As you've noticed, if you've not been able to watch this broadcast live uh, on Monday nights, you have, the, have had the privilege of going back and watching it later on a YouTube or working it, watching it in its full entirety on YouTube. Uh, that is something that we're contemplating not doing any longer. So we want you to pay very close attention on how to obtain a copy of this broadcast or any of our broadcasts. Um, and for that reason, amen, we just want to give God glory. Amen. Uh, we ask, amen, that you would turn with us to, get your Bibles turned with us to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number four. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter four, verses 18 and verse 19. St. Luke's Gospel, verse chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19, uh, and you shall find these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Right. Tonight I want to talk about why the gospel is still the good news. Okay, amen. amen. Why the gospel is still the good news. Right. 
first of all, sisters and brothers, we need to realize uh, the gospel is defined. It's defined as the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's considered good news because as you and I can attest, you and I can uh, uh, have the assurance and the affirmation that the gospel uh, wasn't a man. We were not in relationship with God. Okay. We didn't have the relationship with God, a man, until Jesus came and died and paid a ransom. That because of his dying, you and I now have the right to the tree of life. All right. And as we look at the text, we look at the holy scriptures of God. We even notice in Acts chapter number 15, verses 7 through verse 9, that Paul and Barnabas... Paul and Barnabas, two, amen, men of the gospel that were assigned by God to take the gospel to those of us, such as you and myself. We, uh, Paul and Barnabas, were uh, instructed to settle dispensations and settle disputes and settle discrepancies among folks. But as they were to settle discrepancies, the Bible says that this is what happened. He says that in the sharing of the gospel, that's why it's considered good news. In the sharing of the gospel, we have to understand that God says that I wanted to give the men and women of God something that would benefit all walks of life. Because those of us, amen, that were poor and those of us that had the, uh, did not have the privileges of having the gospel preached to us, to those of us who were underprivileged, to those of us who could not afford, amen, the manuscript for those of us who had to work in the fields, those of us who had to labor those of us, amen, that did not have the luxury of automobiles, but had to walk to and from to get a word. Paul says, amen, as he echoes the words of Jesus in the text. Jesus made the statement, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the reason that the spirit of the Lord came upon him was that he might have obtained such an anointing right, right, right. to preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. And he says that not only, amen, that we should get excited and the gospel is good news to those of us who are underprivileged because, amen, not only did he come that he might heal the brokenhearted, that he may preach deliverance to the captive, that he may render the, the recovering of the sight to the blind, but to set them that were in bondage, to set them that were in captivity, to set them free that were bruised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those that had a condition, those that had a circumstance, those that had a situation where they did not have the privilege or the necessities of receiving relief. Yeah. But the most important thing that I find in the, uh, why the gospel is important and why the gospel is good news is that number one, he says, he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Right. And well, if, if, if the gospel must come to the poor, I want the poor tonight to get excited that you don't have to pay for it. Uh, if the gospel came to the poor, I want the poor to understand that if you don't have the funds necessary to stand in the $100 line, if you don't have the funds necessary to stand in the $50 line or the $20 line, that just because you are indigent, don't have any source of income, God says, I still sent a word for your right now situation. And I don't know about you, but when I think about that, I don't have to have no money. I don't need any bail money. I don't need any money for restoration. Amen. All I need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, I can't help but attest to the fact that that's good news. Amen. 
And, 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 and not only that, after everything that I've gone through, after everything that one would encounter, amen, on a day by day, on a week by week, or a month by month, or on a year by year situ uh, uh, circumstance, every weight that I have, every hindrance that I have, every dilemma that I have, every mohill that I have, every mountain that I have, I get satisfied in knowing, amen, that if I can just get to the word of God. If I can get to the place, amen, where the word of God is being administered, if I can get to the place where I can just receive a word from my right now situation, I remember hearing David say, I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because I, I get excited because I know, amen, that the moment that I can come into the house of the Lord to get a word, not for any shape, not for any form, not for any fashion, but the moment I can get into the word of God in the proximity of the word of God, I know that I'm going to get consolation. And I'm going to get consolation in knowing the benefits of being there where the word is. Number one, I'm going to get rejuvenation. I'm going to get revived. I'm going to get inspiration. I'm going to get motivation. And, and all of this is good news because I cannot help but conclude that it's good because when I think of the goodness of Jesus... When I think about where he brought me from, when I think about what he brought me out of, when I think about what he's doing right now, how he's molding, how he's shaping, how he's making avenues of escape, how he's making ways out of no way, how he's making my mountains a low place, how he's making my valleys, amen, a, a stepping stone where I can step over the obstacles in my life, I cannot help but express, amen, that it's good news. Be be because I, because I, I, I must conclude that just one word from God will change the dynamics of my situation. Just one word from the Lord will make all the difference in what I'm going through. Just one word from the Lord, amen, will give me the confidence, amen, in, in, in the assurance and knowing that God has not brought me where I am just to leave me. It's good news to know, amen, that the God that we serve promised according to his word. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And I don't know about you, but that to me is good news. When, when I can, amen, instill in my mind and put in my spirit and, 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 and gurgitate in my stomach, amen, over and over that God has promised me that, amen, no matter what my circumstance is what come will or may God has promised that I'll always be there with you I always amen if you put your trust in me if you put your confidence in me if you this is what he said if you abide in me and my word abide in you you can ask for what you will and it shall be given unto you so I cannot help but get consolation in knowing the fact that just one word from God, amen, in knowing, amen, that the gospel is still good news. When I, when I think about it, amen, the historical effects of the country, when I think about Britain, when I think about wars, amen, and rumors of wars, I, I cannot help but remember how Paul Revere used to ride the horse and he would come and he would shout amen the news of the British was coming he would shout amen of the news that the troops were coming amen and I cannot help but get consolation when I hear the preacher when I hear the man of God talk about Jesus 
is coming. In the midst of what I'm going through, in the midst of my troubled situation, in the midst of my confusion, in the midst of catastrophic situations, amen, I can't help but get confidence when I sit in the sanctuary and hear the man of God, hear the woman of God, or when I read the article, amen, that Jesus is coming. And what I must, amen, what I must rejoice about is the fact that he's not just coming, but he's coming back for a church. Without a spot nor a wrinkle, he's coming back for the lost house of Israel. He's coming back to those of us, amen, that have fixed it up with the Lord. He's coming back to those of us who have become tied up and tangled up and Feel with the precious Holy Ghost because he said in the word, this is why the spirit fell on me. The spirit fell on me that I may let everybody know that the gospel is still good news. And, and, and then he says, preach it as it is the acceptable year of the Lord. I, I want you to know, amen, those of you that are listening, those of you that are watching, those of you that are reading, I want you to know, amen, that he said, preach the acceptable year of the Lord, amen. You ought to get encouraged in knowing this is your year. Amen. This is your year of jubilee. This is your year of a new awakening. This is your year of being revived, being refreshed, and being rejuvenated. This is your year that God is going to allow you to recover some things. Some things that the enemy has taken away from you. Some things the enemy, amen, have stripped from you. The, some things that the enemy has tried, amen, to distort and disfigure, but you you need to know that the good news is that God promised, he said, I'll restore everything. Amen. I'll do just like I did in Job's situation that if you remain faithful, that's good news. If you stay on the line, if you remain faithful and steadfast and unmovable and abide in the word or the doctrine of the Lord, God said, then I'll move. Then I will restore. Job 42. He gave him twice as much as he had in the beginning. And all because he abided and stayed in relationship with God. And I want to encourage you, my sister and my brother. I want to encourage you that if you, amen, can just get to know, amen, the gospel, amen. This is what the preachers of old used to say. The, the preachers of old used to say that you have not shared the word of God. You have not preached the word of God until you tell somebody. The good news, and the good news is, is that he caught a nine-month train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came down through 42 generations. Stopped off in a town called Bethlehem of Judea. Born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling cloth, laid in a manger. Amen. And, and stayed here for 33 years and six months. And he died, but he didn't stay dead. The good news is, is that he got, he got up on the third day morning with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Amen. And, and not only did he get up, amen, and, and, and catch his glory train back to the Father, but the good news is he still lives. Uh, and because, because, because he lives, we can face tomorrow because he lived. All of our fears are gone because he lived. I can rest at night in the in the knowing that the Savior lives. Amen. And I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. When when you you want to share with me some good news, don't tell me amen. And and it is good news. But 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 don't tell me amen that we're breaking hurdles and we're breaking strives amongst the people of God, amen, amongst uh ethnicities of people. But if you want to share good news with me, 
Tell me that the Savior still lives. Tell me that God got all of my problems in the hollow of his hand. Tell me that God won't leave me, nor will he forsake me. Tell me that God, amen, will never turn his back on me. Tell me if you want to share some good news with me. Tell me about, amen, he's, on, he's working on my behalf. He's working on my now situation. Tell me he going to heal my body. Tell me he, he going to restore, amen, uh, the trouble in my home. Tell me he going to make my grandmama, amen, get up off of her sick bed. Tell, if you got some good news to tell me, tell me the, the benefits in knowing. And having a relationship in him. And, and, and brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. Before I conclude, amen, there is a benefit in knowing that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he promised, he promised that he would come and he would not tarry. I'm grateful to the Lord as we celebrated on yesterday, Pentecost, as we celebrated the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen, we celebrated Pentecost. I want you to know, sisters and brothers, amen, that I'm still excited because Pentecost was good news. Pentecost was good news because we were limited we had limited mobility. We had limited power. But the good news is, I can speak now those things that are not as though they were. The good news is, amen, that, that God has given healing power in our hand. The good news is, is that we can lay hands on ourselves and the sick will recover. We are grateful to the Lord tonight. And I pray, my sister, my brother, I pray that you've been blessed and empowered by the word of God. Amen. I want to offer Christ to you tonight. I want to offer Christ to you, amen, that if you would accept him as your personal Savior and your Lord, if you would believe in your heart, amen, that God had raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, beloved, if you would believe that and you would need, you now need to be in a place where the gospel, where the good news is continuously being shared. I want to extend this invitation to you to partner with us here at the Agape Christian Center in West Memphis, Arkansas. Well, you may say, what would my partnership gain me? What would I gain from being associated with Agape? Well, First of all, I want to send you a certificate of covenant partnership, amen, that will have your name on it, amen, as a covenant partner with this ministry. I want to send you, amen, one of our weekly broadcast DVD, CD, amen, of each of our service, amen. I want to send you literature and information pertaining to our ministry, and I want to do this, amen, in uh, uh, in, in such a fashion, I want to send you material, uh, uh, hats and umbrellas and uh, bags and purses right. that have the church's information that you may be able to represent Agape where you are. Right. Amen. We're grateful, amen, that God has launched this broadcast out into 19 different countries. Amen. As we speak. And God is yet blessing and continuously blessing. And I want you to be a part of this move of God. Amen. I want you to know, beloved, that it will also take funds and finances to take this ministry to another level. And we're going to ask you, amen, in your partnering with us to sow a seed to be a blessing financially. Amen. Into this ministry. We're going to ask, amen, whatever your contribution is, big or small. Amen. We want you to partner with this ministry, uh, and, and to much that is given, much is required. Amen. So we, we ask for your financial support to this ministry. Amen. And we want to rush you. We want to rush you right now. I want to rush you right now. If you make contact with us, amen, you can contact us by uh, writing us, and I know that writing is also almost obsolete, 
but you can inbox us, you can Facebook us, amen, you can visit us, amen, uh, at, at the previous information that was given, you can call me. My personal cell phone number is 901-270-1727. What I want to do is I want to rush you right now. The copy of the service that I preached on yesterday morning, I thank God for Pentecost. Amen. 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 What a powerful, mighty word from God yesterday. I yes, thank sir. God for Pentecost. Yes, I want to send you right now. If you make contact with me, I'm going to send you, amen, that particular service from yesterday. I thank God for Pentecost. Yes, the yes, Bible sir. says that after the, the Holy Spirit, amen, had fully come, mm -hmm. they were all in one place, amen, after the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were yes. all in one place yes. on one accord and suddenly, amen, uh, and suddenly, yes. the Holy Ghost came as a sound, as a much rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house that they were in, yes. amen. So I thank God yes. for Pentecost. Yes, I want to send that to you. All you have to do is make contact with me. If you don't have, amen, the ability to make contact with me, go next door and borrow your neighbor's, amen, source of amen communication amen. and get in touch with us amen. you're going to be blessed yes, by receiving i thank god for pentecost yes, well god bless you i'm bishop lawrence vaughn amen for you we're praying and we pray that you will continue to pray for me and agape and remember we may not continue to upload our videos in you by youtube amen so you will have to contact us if you would like to have the, the, the services in its entirety, amen. I apologize for doing that, amen, but we feel that it's necessary. And uh, we ask, amen, amen. that you would uh, make contact with amen. us and stay. Well, that's why we're here on a holiday yeah. so that we can continue to come to all you. Right, right, God bless right. you as our prayers for you. We're praying. Amen. 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 Yes. Why the gospel is still good news. Coming from the book of St. Luke, chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. Who else do you know will never leave you nor forsake you? Will never leave you nor forsake you, as Pastor said. Again, why the gospel... While the gospel is still good news. Coming from St. Luke, chapter 4 verse 18 through 19. Like Pastor said once again, who do you know will never leave you nor forsake you? Yes. We're talking about the gospel on tonight, just more food for the soul. Then Jesus goes on to tell us, let not our heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Not only that, but his father's house has many mansions. Yes. All right. Yes. He's already prepared a place for us. It's say up to it, us whether it. we choose to receive it or not. Yes. yes. We plead with you to grab hold of God tonight. All right, all right. Just like Bishop said, I mean, if you just need renewing, mm -hmm. if you just need guidance, if you just right. need teaching. Yes, sir. Jesus, God is in the house is the place to be. Right. Amen. In the house yes. is the place to be. Yes. Yes, when I is. tell you none other. In church yesterday, I'm talking about the God Holy Spirit. I'm talking about just rain down. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Just the thought of it, my God, my God. While the gospel is still good news. Yes, yes, Amen. Good news. Just yes. that title yes, is just yes. something awesome. Yes. I say awesome. Yes, awesome. yes. Sisters and brothers, uh, God is faithful. And right. We want to thank our viewers for viewing us and helping us with our ministry. Yes. And uh, faithfulness. You know, just relationship, you know, with yes, God, God. All right, you know. All right. So we want to thank everybody for viewing us, uh, the VBS Gospel Network with Say the Agape it. Christian Center and Bishop Lawrence Vaughn. Yes, Have a sir. good evening. Hadn't thought.